Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Weekly Wisdom. So today I want to take you a little trip back down memory lane to when we were all skin flat broke, had absolutely no cash but we still had to do all of our SEO work and get results for our clients. So nowadays, I don't know about you guys, but my monthly tool bill, I could probably buy a small country we spend so much on tools and things like that. But what if we didn't actually have any cash? Could we still do our jobs as effectively? Maybe not as quickly, but we could definitely still get the same results. So in this week's Weekly Wisdom, I'm gonna be going into all the tools and processes you need to use if you're absolutely broke. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay guys, so let's first of all take a little trip down memory lane. So a lot of these are gonna feel very nostalgic to some of the guys that have been doing SEO for, you know, five, 10, 15 years. The ones that have been doing for 20 years, uh, you need to get a life because SEO wasn't really a thing 20 years ago, so I don't know what you were doing. Um, so, first and foremost, you're gonna need a crawler. Um, and what better crawler that is free than Zenu Link Sleuth. Now, this thing is like, imagine like if you're grandfather had a baby with screaming frog uh, it's kind of like that um it's a really like basic um crawler that's very slow but it gets all the urls out and gives you some cool things like titles and descriptions and things like that and if you've got no money this is potentially a particularly good one to go for uh next up um you know something i think just having base level knowledge is really underestimated um, and one of the big things, especially if you're doing any sort of link building, um, it's going to be understanding search operators. So this is one of my friend's websites, a guy called Andy Drinkwater. He's also quite a prolific uh, blogger on the, the SEMrush blog as well. Um, what you can see here is he's created this massive list of Google search operators. So you can literally take this here. And if I go and Google this with my keyword, let's just say the keyword is... SEO because I do not have a creative bone in my body and what that's going to do is it's going to put together all of the pages on the web that will allow you to contribute to them um, that's around the term SEO so if you're doing any sort of link building this might be a good start for you to actually have a look and see if these sites are appropriate for you. Now talking about finding out if sites are appropriate if you have the SEO Quake plugin which again is completely free you get this really cool thing that sits over the SERP. So for example, if I was to go back to, um, let's say that Google result there, so become a contributor and you'll see that, oh, we're starting to get all this overlay overmation from um, SEO Quake, which is pulling all the SEMrush data into it. Now, if you're doing loads and loads of these and you're wanting to pull the entire SERP, look at this really nice feature, which is called Export CSV, and you'll never guess what it does, that's right. It exports the SERP to CSV, um, but it also gives you all of the metrics along with it. So I'm a bit of a crafty SEO, and what I've done is I've instead of doing just 10 results, you can see that I've actually got 100 results at a time here. So you can do that by just changing your search settings inside Google itself. And what it's going to do when you hit export CSV, it's going to give you 100 of those results with metrics, which is a really nice, quick, easy way to get a bunch of stuff into a spreadsheet. Now, for the eagle-eyed ones out there, you're gonna also see this thing here, and you'll be like, what is that? Well, let me just turn SEO quick off. So, word of warning, if you're using it consistently, you will get blocked by Google, because it pulls in so much information. Um, this is called Keywords Everywhere, and essentially it will put it inside of the Google SERP, it will put it inside of Search Console, Google Analytics, you name it, it will pull keyword data in for you. So this is actually a really good tool if you're doing some sort of keyword research but you don't have the budget to do, um, to buy into something like SEMrush. Um, so again, for Keywords Everywhere, it's actually a Chrome plugin um, on keywordseverywhere.com. It's a really good one for Firefox and Chrome. Um, if you're doing a bit of keyword research, kind of top level, this is really useful um, as part of your kind of tool set and the best thing is it's free of charge. Okay, the next one's going to feel like a bit of a low ball. Um, using Google Sheets and Google Apps Scripts, again, you just need to let, know a little tiny bit of JavaScript 
and a bunch of Excel formulas in order to use this properly. The reason I've got their YouTube channel up is because they actually have got a ton of really good tutorials on how to manipulate data inside of Sheets, how to automate SEO processes. If I had this when I was um, starting out in SEO, one of the first things I'd be doing is starting to build apps on top of G Suite because the moment you get the data in, you can manipulate it and automate it in so many ways, you can really cut out a lot of the time needed when you're running all of your different SEO projects. Another big one for me, and I still use it to this day, although I'm not actively link building, um, that's mostly the team doing that now, is Link Clump. So Link Clump essentially, if I have like a big group of domains, let's say, or a big group of links, so if I wanted to pull these links out here, um, Link Clump essentially just lets me uh, right click and, and kind of go over it like this. And what that does, as it pulls all of the links in the anchor text out and it allows me to copy and paste that directly into Sheets. Um, next one, very controversial. Now, we use this to pull data in, not to push data out. So, you know when we were saying that, you know, Andy Drinkwater's blog's got all of these amazing um, kind of footprints and things like that? Well, doing that one at a time can be quite slow. So if you use something like Scrapebox, you can actually bang those through Google like thousands at a time. And if you've got a big army of VAs working for you or a massive team of people doing outreach, being able to get a couple of hundred um, results in for each of your pieces of outreach you're going to be doing is going to save you just that little bit more time. Um, so again, really good one. And in terms of actually cleaning up data, one of the great things it has is you know, trim to main domain, you can check the metrics, you can see if the URL is even indexed before you reach out to it. So it'll do a lot of heavy lifting for you, like before you even get to the point where you're doing your outreach, so you can work out if it's a good URL or a bad one. All right, next up, I was looking for something called Wiki Summarizer, but it has since went extinct. Um, if you can outlive the software you use as an SEO, I think that says a lot about um, your longevity. So. Wiki Summarizer essentially used to be exactly what it sounds like. It used to just summarize Wikipedia. So when you were building briefs, for example, if I go to you know, Wikipedia. Um, so when you were actually building out um, content briefs for people, let's say it's on you know, basketball, um, we would use this to pull out all the main entities so we can start giving this to our writers so they can say, well, if we're creating a page about basketball, we need to mention basketball hoops and Michael Jordan and things like that. But the thing is with this page, it's probably, oh man, it's, it's huge, it's like 5,000 plus words. And if you're going to be briefing a copywriter, you can't spend time just going over Wikipedia and pulling things out. So for this, what you can actually do is you can copy and paste in the Wikipedia content and you can hit summarize and you can say, well, summarize it in three sentences what's happening. And essentially it's going to start giving you all the major kind of core points. Now this particular one I think looks like a piece of news that kind of comes with the tool. This is, again, it's completely free, um, but if we were to drop in like tons of basketball related stuff, this is really lo-fi stuff here. Um, let's go and drop this in. You're going to very quickly start seeing Okay, so you need to talk about dribblers, um, you need to start talking about um, stealing the ball, you need to mention Kevin Durant, you need to you see where we're going. So like this actually gives you a very good idea of what you should be writing about to rank. Um, another one that I absolutely love um, is something that what's by SEO book, and um, we used to use this all the time. So if I wanted to see, for example, what the header response was, you know how sometimes there's like daisy chain redirects or problems at accessing a website? You can literally just click check headers and what it's going to do, it's going to give you the header response right here and it's a 200 OK. Now, if you are one of those annoying characters that use a Mac, I am one of them, um, you can actually just use curl inside the terminal in order to get that. So if I bring up the terminal, here it is here, um, I can literally just specify the URL. So if I put in my company, typemedia.net, hoping it's a 200, it is, <laughs> thank God for that. Um, so you can see here, this is the HTTP header um, that comes in and a bunch of header information. So if you had a bunch of daisy chain redirects and things like that, this would also show up here so you can very quickly diagnose what's going on in your redirects. 
Now we're really going down memory lane. Traffic Travis, this is a desktop rank checker. Um, full disclosure, I've not used it in a very long um, time, but if you're really struggling to do like quick rank checks, this might be actually quite a good source for you. And it's also got a bunch of kind of top level SEO stuff as well you can have a little look at. Um, so that is everything for this kind of overview of some tools to use that will help you get along inside of SEO that are pretty much free of charge. Thank you so much for watching this week's Weekly Wisdom. If you've got any tools that I've missed that are absolutely free, please leave them in the comments down below. You can also follow me on LinkedIn or Twitter. And until next time, we will see you later.